Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Good Doctors Analyzing episode nine of season one of The Crown, Assassins. I'm Dr. Hinson. And I'm Dr. Donnelly. And we are here to talk through all the drums of this episode. And oh, spoiler alert, there was a lot of drama. Drama with um, Anthony Eden and Churchill, drama with Churchill and his portrait getting painted, drama with Philip and Elizabeth, lots of stuff. Uh, we start the episode with uh, Elizabeth talking, oh no, we start the episode with a man named Porchy uh, asking a woman to marry him. And she asks him if he holds a torch for Elizabeth, which gives us a clue to a little bit of what this episode is going to be about. Uh, and as per every episode this season, Elizabeth is also very anxious about all of Philip's goings on. So turbulent time <laughs> in, royal, in the royal marriage as per usual. Um, Winston is uh, retired from obviously being prime minister um, and just chilling out in the countryside at his home painting. Anthony Eden returns with a clean bill of health from America, where he was for surgery. Yeah. Um, and Elizabeth, we learn about her felt her friendship with Porchy, who she's known for a very long time. Um, she clearly connects with him on a level that she doesn't connect with Philip, and she's lonely. Poor girl's lonely. She doesn't have any friends. Her family hates her. Her husband is being a whiny uh, douche tard, and she's all alone. Uh. Eden visits Churchill, and we learn a lot more about um, kind of the machinations of Tory politics, which, you know, always keep Kristen and I super energized in life. Uh, all, it, all this scene made me think about was how amazing John Lithgow was. Yeah, very true. That's like, he is just life-giving in this. Um, and I saw a recent interview with um, Matt Smith, where they were talking about season two, uh, and they were like, what do you miss most about season one? And they were like, John Lithgow, John Lithgow. And he was like, he is my best friend. He is my favorite human being on this earth. He is a wonderful person to act with, and he also knows everyone at Liverpool football, apparently. And like, took Matt Smith to a Liverpool Arsenal game and introduced him to all of these people. And he was like, he is a god. Yeah. So, oh my gosh. I had no yeah. idea that Lithgow was a red. That's exciting. I, knew I think so. Either that or an Arsenal supporter. I don't know, but I oh, think it was, this is important. Like, this is important information for me to clarify. I know. So we need to clarify, but like Matt Smith was just, you know, pissing himself because he got to meet all of his football idols. And, and he's like, we walked into the room and everyone was like, John. And I was like, <gasps> so that was a tangent about how wonderful John Lithgow is, which he is in this role. Um, and then we see Elizabeth and Philip start to fight. He is clearly very jealous about her relationship with Porchy, which I have no time for. None. Whatsoever. Um, and then the crux of this uh, episode, one of the main themes is, um, Winston getting his portrait painted for his 80th birthday. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they bring in uh, a painter, Sutherland, whom I'd never heard of, but sure. Um, and Churchill wants it to be like a glorious representation of everything he was, and that is not what type, the type of painter Sutherland is. Um, they have a lot of emotional bonds about losing children. It's very emotional scenes, like John Lithgow gets the Emmy, I think, for this episode, which he does for that season. It was amazing. Um, Towards the end of the episode, he's very upset with the portrayal. In the portrait, as it's unveiling, um, he's dealing with his own mortality. Lots of themes we can all identify with that don't have anything to do with Elizabeth Windsor, which is, as Dr. Donnelly and I have mentioned, why we are watching the show. Yeah, we do know historically that it was actually Churchill's wife that burned the painting um, and not Churchill himself. So that's an interesting, like... That is an interesting... I didn't know that. That's an interesting yeah. thing. My guess is that they were doing budget cuts and they couldn't afford his wife. So, um, <laughs> pretty simple. Um, regarding the fight... Yeah, we get, we get a big fight scene between the two of them. Between Elizabeth and Philip, and we'll get there. But we yeah. just want to really quickly let you know that Anthony Eden is one of Britain's worst prime ministers. 
Oh yeah, like historically. Like, historically, like this is this is not contested. No, this it is, is not understood fact. Um, so if you are um, new to British history and are experiencing it through the show, and you watch scenes and you're like, surely someone cannot be that dumb. No, he is. He is, he is that ineffectual um, and had no business ever being the party leader and therefore no business being prime minister. Yes. And there are a lot of machinations this episode about that. Fascinating. But again, we're not here for the dudes. So we're now going to, I have two main summary statement problems with how Philip spoke to Elizabeth in this episode. Please tell me. what well, you, all, uh, Viewers, all you need to know is that they're fighting over the fact that she once was attached to another human being that wasn't him, and he can't handle it. That's and it. That, and that they have this understanding over horses that Philip doesn't have because he doesn't like horses. Cool, you don't like horses. Let her have a like, friend in her life. Yeah. Philip is being a child. He's being a toddler. Yes. So, point the first. I hate the joke that he's crass about the horse sex. Yeah. Because... Elizabeth Windsor and neither Elizabeth Windsor nor Elizabeth Regina are crass people. No. So that was, he was a power very, move. He was very mean spirited. Yeah. Very crass and very inappropriate. Mm -hmm. And two, at the end, when he mouths sorry across the dinner table, no, buddy, no. You rent a skywriter for the crap. <laughs> you you yeah. like commission a boat. Like you, that was. You this questioned the entire foundation of your marriage and the foundation of your, like, children. And anytime, Back anytime from that. she possibly hints that he might have cheated on her, which we do know historically there were several indiscretions, as the Brits like to say. Anytime she confronts him about his business or his prop, where he's doing, he loses his mind. How could you make that kind of suggestion? Well, I would never do that to our marriage. Don't you trust me? She and has she eyes, you idiot. Like... She wants to be involved in studying the horses that she owns. Like, and we also know from many biographers of Elizabeth, and this is like understood by all citizens of the UK, by the way, that Elizabeth, if she could abdicate and just work with horses, she would have. Like, yeah. she is a nature person. Like, the fact that <laughs> Megan's dog hung out with her during the wedding was not an accident. I'm going to guess that Lizzie asked. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Can I, can I mind your dog? Because she loves dogs and horses. All she wanted to do was raise horses and own dogs. That's it. That's and have all kids. she wanted to do. And like, that was after, when Charles finally married Camilla, I remember a whole lot of speculation over how pissed Elizabeth must be because she'll never abdicate to Camilla. So now Charles just like essentially doomed her to even less time with her horses. <laughs> to retire and then he married that woman so um yeah she loves horses it's a big thing i mean all the pictures i love the pictures of her wearing like country gear with like old grandma scarves driving my, her range rover around her property in scotland. in scotland it's one of my favorite things about elizabeth uh back to philip yeah um so the thing that gets me too is that he won't tell her that he loves her Nope. I understand that this is a thing for some dudes. Mm -hmm. um, and that there are many families in the world that do not believe in saying I love you. I'm not a member of one of those families. Me neither. Um, I do not believe in that. I do not ascribe to that philosophy that like <laughs> I told you I married you once and therefore I never have to tell you that I love you ever again. Clearly that was evidence of that love and why would you need me Yeah, to no, no, it's inappropriate. No, we need constant affirmation here. Um, those words would cost him nothing. Philip, not my hypothetical groom. Um, <laughs> those words would cost him nothing. He still won't give it to her. Mm. Because he desperately, I think my theory is that at least the way that Matt Smith is playing him is that this is the only power Philip has left is to withhold himself from her. And that is Ooh. disgusting to me that he is that small of a man that he would do that. That small of a human that his recourse for having to kneel to his wife is to withhold himself from her. I don't know. 
Again, not maybe real life Philip, except we do know that he had at least, I think it's at least four confirmed affairs. I could be wrong on that number, but it's more than one. <laughs> um, and I know one of them is tied to one of the bigger fights between Charles and Philip, who also, spoiler alert, have a terrible relationship to this day. Um, but um, I may have read a couple of royal biographies. More I was going to say, you have all of this institutional knowledge coming at it. Um, and it's a fictionalized portrayal, obviously, as we say, but we know that these problems are real within particularly their marriage, and so mm -hmm. it's not a far stretch to imagine. Um, and I do think, I do think they care for each other. I do Ooh, think yeah. they love each other, and I think that um, the emotional scene in the car where they're yelling at each other is kind of sad proof of that. Like, I really... You don't fight with someone like that that you don't love. That I you mean, don't love and that you don't... And you don't behave the way he's behaving if you don't care about the other person. It's not at all an excuse for his behavior. No, and I think he's hurt, and I think he doesn't know what to do. Um, I mean, in some... I think I think it's, it's the next episode, spoiler, where we learn a whole lot more about his childhood. Um, isn't it, or is it later in the season two? It's and I'm mixing things in up. Season two. Okay, sorry, but we watched in, everything. In very few episodes after this, we learn a lot more about how oh, yes. horrible his childhood was. Yeah. So we'll and talk was, about this more when it occurs in season yeah. two. But this boy and this man has never had a stable family or ever. stable people who love him ever. Have not been threatened or been taken away from him. So it, I think it explains a lot about his behavior. Yep. He still has room to grow, as do everybody else that have horrible childhoods. Oh, uh, for sure. And, like, your horrible childhood is not an excuse for how you behave as an adult, but it is certainly an explanation. Yeah. And I think that this is one of those times where this is one of the areas in which if they had allowed to be married for a long time before they became monarchs, um, their marriage would have looked so different because they yeah. could have worked through this more. They could have, like, he would have enjoyed some power for a little while. I think the Navy was really important to him. And when that had to get taken away, he didn't, he did not know how to cope. And he um, didn't know how to be himself. He doesn't and, know who he is. I yeah. Think. And then he, the parts of himself that he identified with being the man, being the husband, being in the Navy, he lost all of those. And then that wasn't replaced with anything. Mm -mm. And they just told him he couldn't be who he was. And they didn't really craft a role for him to be who he was now mm -hmm. as the prince consort for quite a while. And that's, I think, because of the immediacy of how quickly her father died. They didn't have time to build that role. Where I think if he had lived longer and they had, they had more lead in time, they would have figured out how he could have still been himself or a version of himself in yeah. this role but they they legit didn't have the time because the time died and she had to take over and there was nobody to help her yeah and i think about like if if elizabeth and i were friends and she came to my kitchen table after that fight like what would i say um and uh, i pride myself on having the kitchen table of consolation by the way dear viewers so um she does. It's a great kitchen table. Mm -hmm. So, um, and with cups of coffee or tea or glasses of wine. Yeah. I mean, you want a beverage, I will acquire it for you. Um, and That's I will cool. send my husband to fetch snacks. So. <laughs> he is so helpful. So wonderful. Um, so if she was across the table from me, I think what I would say is that boy loves you and he's afraid of it. Mm -hmm. He's afraid of how much he loves you because anything he's ever loved has disintegrated in front of him. It's why he can't love his kids. It's why he can't, he can't do it because he has been over and over and over again. People have told him that he's worthless and that's awful. And then I would drive directly over to his house and smack him about the head <laughs> and march him to therapy. <laughs> and, say, and say, you have problems. They are legit. Don't take them out on your wife. She's the flipping queen of England and Scotland and Wales and the Commonwealth and the everywhere. And Northern Ireland that you like to ignore. Like all of it. Like she's got a big job, pal. And all she needs from you is trust. And she has done zero to, for you to earn, for, she's done zero to earn the behavior you are throwing at her. Yeah. You have done a million things to earn the behavior that she is throwing at you. And all you can manage is, sorry. No, no. Unacceptable. Absolutely unacceptable. So 
know. But of course, not only do British people in this era not go to therapy, but monarchs certainly don't. <laughs> wow, could you imagine? Uh, and then what if those tapes got leaked? Yeesh. Uh, that would be some drama. As a non-British citizen, I would buy, I would advance co order copy that. <laughs> like, <laughs> I would just, not to destroy their lives, but I am so fascinated by how people with ex this much external pressure function privately. Like, yeah. it utterly fascinates me. It was, a, it was an episode, it was an arc in the last season of Designated Survivor where his wife was killed, um, Don, uh, Kiefer Sutherland's wife was killed, and he started going to therapy and someone was leaking his therapy tapes. Like, of the president of the United States, no. it was not. And then they used it to try and, like, impeach him because the therapist's notes were like, he struggles at times. I'm like, well, yeah, you know, he was made president by a terrorist attack that killed most of the government and then his wife was killed so struggling is kind of on par but yeah, that made me think of it like what if those tapes got released and we got to hear all of like elizabeth's deepest internal whinges oh so good but i also i also want to hear about how much she loves her grandkids because i, I, I want to hear like the days where she just talks about her granny her gr being a granny and how sad she was that her corgis died yeah well, and on that note, uh, where we give some therapeutic uh, offerings to both Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Which we uh, know they will take us up on because we know <laughs> they're subscribers. We know they watch these videos because we definitely know they watch The Crown. They don't watch The Crown. And they um, should. They absolutely shouldn't. Are you kidding me? All oh these people that kept asking, like, are the royals, do, they, do you watch The Crown? I was like, stop it. Like, yeah. I think I've heard, I've heard Matt Smith say they've had maybe confirmation that like Princess Eugenie has watched it and they think Harry and William, but the queen has like outright said she will never watch it. God, why would you? I would not need to watch my life um, or a dramatization of my life. Uh, and I think that goes for Prince Philip as well, probably. What's going to be really interesting is if on that front, if they... Um if they make all of my dreams come true and cast Helen Mirren as like ol oldest Elizabeth in the series. Cause I think Peter Morgan said they're going to stop in like 2012 or something like that. Like I can't, like they have a, would that, they might that also would be saying that cause we're all being obnoxious about Harry and Meghan's wedding, but he's got an end date. That would be, yeah. That would be Will's and Kate's wedding was. Both yeah. So that might be it. So it might, he might stop it at Will's and Kate's. That was a, their wedding was 11. Yeah. So he might stop it at that. I'm not sure. Um, or he might, no, you know, he wanted to stop it at the Jubilee. That was it. His thought was that he would stop it at her 70th Jubilee that happened in 12. Yeah. 12 or 13. Yeah. No, it was 12 because we got the four day bank holiday. Oh, right. 12. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I went to Oslo. Yeah. Um, but um, anyway, so they do Helen Mirren. <laughs> Helen Mirren has an OBE. Yeah. <laughs> that I'm pretty sure that the oh, queen yeah. the queen gave her. Yeah. So like and she has played Queen Elizabeth in the past. That would be amazing. That would be so full circle. I would love it. I know. Um in the meantime, we're gonna go fangirl over um how incredible we think Elizabeth is that she muddled through. Yeah. As a as a human woman, we are not commenting on Queendom in this particular episode. <laughs> we are commenting on the fact that she did not run him over with her car after this conversation. Tempting, tempting, uh, as we are sh sure that it was to do so. Yeah, and nor did she just like take off for Scotland, which I would have been like, or to one of her other places. Like she did not separate herself from him and that would have been valid. Right. And on that note, that's all we've got for episode nine. I'm Dr. Hinson. I'm Dr. Donnelly. We will be back with you for episode 10, season finale. We're almost done with the first season. <laughs> we will see you guys next week with that episode. Till then, take care. Bye. Bye.